Hey guys, how are you? So I'm gonna answer a question that was put to me. Somebody who was uh, learning from me, uh, the full stack course and the freelance course, and they had their first e-commerce client and they didn't know how to price out the particular e-commerce job. I won't get into the specifics of the job because it's not matter. The lesson here is how do you price out a job to do an e-commerce job? And uh, how do you price it out? How do you calculate if you've never done such a thing before? So here you go. First of all, the first question is, what do you use? Do you use Stripe, PayPal? What do you do? Do you get your own merchant accounts? I've done it all and I've done others as well. My suggestion in 2018-19 is to use either Stripe to process your credit cards or PagePal. When you use those platforms, they will provide you with all kinds of documentation, including easy to use uh, code examples, whether it be in Python or uh, PHP, of course, and even Ruby. And um, of course, Ruby. And um, so what you do if, you, uh, if you've never priced it out before, get their basic requirements for a store from them and then try to do like the first half an hour, an hour or two, eh, an hour or two using, I would start with Stripe th these days. I find that the Stripe backend tools are a bit better than PayPal now. Although PayPal is making strides, that's for sure, to update their systems. And uh, I would just do the first hour or two, just consider your, your learning on the job. And then once you've done that first hour or two, of uh, breaking yourself into the whole e-commerce process using Stripe or PayPal, uh, you'll be able to judge the, uh, the entire scope of the project uh, much more accurately. Now, that's why in my freelancer course, I do provide the time tracker spreadsheet template. It's very important that you use that if you're a freelancer course uh, user because it's gonna help you become a much better judge of uh, how long it takes to do something. And in no time, Bob's your uncle, you'll be a master evaluator of project timelines. Now, so for that first one, you gotta think of it as a training session uh, that you're getting paid, so fantastic. You know, you're not, you know, you're getting paid to do something. And so when you're first starting out, you're gonna get paid a little bit less. You're gonna get paid a little bit less. But that's okay because you're learning, you're not going to a ten thousand or twenty thousand dollar boot camp and paying to learn. This in this case, you're being paid to learn, even if it's uh, lower wages, first of all. Just consider a learning process. Anyhow, so uh, that's the way you do it. You jump into a platform, a struggle stripe, spend a couple hours learning their uh, the basic integration. E-commerce is pretty simple, in fact. It's uh, typically somebody comes to your site. You're going to have to have a HTTPS site. Anyway, all your sites should be HTTPS. That's a secure site with SSL. You can use paid SSL certificates or you can use free ones. Talk to your hosting company. They'll help you with all that. And uh, they come to the site and they could buy products, uh, add it to a cart. And then at the end of the day, whether they're adding it to a cart or just putting in an amount and sending you a payment, at the end of the day, you have this dollar amount that... Uh, is sitting in a form and then you press enter and it will go to some processors site it could be stripe it could be paypal and there's many others now the other option the old school option which i've done many times which i never do now is that you collect credit card information on your site and then send that information to the processor behind the scenes i wouldn't do that there's a way to seamlessly integrate without you collecting on your site why because if you do that on your site there's all these security situations you have to contend with, something called CPI compliance. It's a real pain. I've done it. It's not worth it. Just use Stripe, use PayPal, offload the uh, collection of credit card information to them. Makes your life a lot easier. I do not carry any personal information about my clients. It's all kept on Stripe and PayPal and my merchant provider. I have nothing. So if somebody cracks my systems, there's nothing there. There's nothing there. There's just an email address and that's it. There's no uh, personal information. Uh, it just keeps everything safer. So that's the way you should do it. Anyway, it's all detailed at the PayPal website, at the Stripe website. And uh, you should be good to go because all it is, you collect this dollar amount. You send this dollar amount uh, to your provider, your processor like Stripe. And they, they will present a form, they'll collect all the information, credit card information, process that dollar amount, and then what happens behind the scenes, Stripe or PayPal will send the information back to your website, back to your web app, telling you who bought, how much did they pay, and whether or not it was successful. 
And then from there, you can take that information and process their order. So I've done this for digital product and for physical product as well. It sounds more daunting than it is, but if you break it up into these simple components and you use the canned scripts, the canned code that uh, Stripe and PayPal and others will provide for you, it should be doable. So that's how you charge it. Oh, got to take the call. Bye. Hey, guys. A little bit of vlog, so people say, Montreal is such a great city, I love Montreal. Personally, I don't like it so much in the winter. Let me show you why I'm not such a big fan. As you can see, uh, not the most hospitable weather, that's for sure. And uh, that's why a lot of Montrealers, they uh, go down to Florida for the winter. Like a huge number of people from Montreal actually go down to Florida. They'll spend the whole winter there. I think Florida's population goes up something like 3 to 5% in the winter from all the Quebecers, not just Montrealers, all the Quebecers flying down there to get away from the cold. So, yeah, if you're going to visit Montreal, great city in the spring, summer, and fall, leave during the winter. That's what I typically do. All right, we'll talk soon. Bye-bye.